Good morning. Good afternoon. It's time to call to order the special meeting of the Yokohama City Economic Development Trust uh, for December 4th, 2017. Uh, if there are any citizens here who wish to be heard, if there should be sign-up sheets outside, if you would fill one of those out when we come to the part of the agenda where your item is being talked about, we will call on you and uh, we will look forward to hearing from you. Uh, with that being said, first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the November 14th, 2017 Oklahoma City Economic Development Trust. Can we have approval? A motion a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, please cast your votes. And it passes. Next up on our agenda is to ratify the OCEDT claims. I'll move the item. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, please cast your votes. And the claims are approved. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. I did have one question I meant to ask. We're going to revisit on the claims. I noticed the maybe the first of its kind professional management operation service payment to the Scissor Tail Park Foundation. Any update necessary with that or just follow up the money from our earlier action? Okay. I'll ask and answer the question. Yeah, implementing their agreement with the city. So. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Okay. Okay, next on the agenda, we have some items that need individual consideration, and uh, Ms. O'Connor is going to present these. So. Um, the first item, um, item A, is a resolution approving an allocation of GOLT bond funds to reimburse the Oklahoma Industries Authority for expenses they incurred in purchasing a piece of property at Southwest 59th and Air Depot for the um, Boeing project, the most recent Boeing project that we worked on where they added um, 800 jobs, um, average salary at about um, $100,000 a year. Um, we are requesting this reimbur reimbursement because the Oklahoma Industries Authority's purpose is to carry out economic development projects on behalf of Oklahoma County. Um, and uh, they had to purchase this piece of land actually from Oklahoma County. And then um, there were several cleanup and uh, site prep activities that we had to undertake in order to get it ready for Boeing. Um, the provision of this piece of property was a part of the agreement that we had with Boeing as far as incentives. Um, I don't think it was maybe explicitly presented to the, to the, the trust or the city council in the past, um, but it was very much a part of the agreement with Boeing that the, this trust and the city council or the Oklahoma Industries Authority did approve. So um, this land has been provided to Boeing for this project and hopefully future projects if they um, see fit to expand their operations in Oklahoma City. Thank you, ma'am. The amount of the reimbursement is not to exceed um, $1,620,509 um, and will provide documentation to, um, to Brent and Regina to um, substantiate the amount. Thank you. Question? Yes, sir. It's a reimbursement for expenses already made by OAA, correct? Right. Okay. Correct. Uh, I'll move approval of the item. Second. We have a motion to approve in a second. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, please cast your votes. And it is approved. Okay. This next item is item B on your agenda. And this item is a resolution approving a, um, a real estate, a real property purchase agreement between. Oklahoma Gas and Electric, the Economic Development Trust in the city for the for property that's at Southwest 4th and Broadway. Um, I've put together a brief presentation that kind of explains why um, this property was is necessary for the city to acquire and why we've been working with OG&E for probably uh, a couple of years now to try to um, obtain this property. So. Um, First of all, as a part of the, the planning for the MAPS-3 projects, we undertook a, a parking demand study for the Quarter Shore area. And when we looked at the east part of Quarter Shore, which Quarter Shore is the area from the old I-40 to the river, um, roughly um, I-235 or I-35 over to about western, 
Um, when we looked at the east area, we determined that there would be an initial need of about 1,400 parking spaces in the area to serve the demands generated by the new Scissor Tail Park, the Convention Center, the Convention Center Hotel, um, the arena that displaced parking because of the, the boulevard construction for the arena, and then other private development in the area. Um, most of this demand is generated by the convention center, the park, and the hotel, and the arena. So um, what we have proposed is that to meet that demand, we will build, the city will build a, a 500 space surface parking lot on the land that's been acquired for the, the convention center expansion. So it's south of where the new convention center will be built. And then another 800 to 850 spaces that will need to be um, in a structured parking garage um, in the vicinity to serve all of these facilities. Um, because of the location of the facilities and the costs associated with some of the different options that were examined, it was determined that this property at Southwest um, 3rd and Broadway was the best, best possible choice to build a parking garage. Um, the cost to construct the garage is approximately $40 million. Um, that may change some as, as we get further along in the planning process for the, for the garage. And the funding sources for that $40 million would include a COTPA, a Central Oklahoma Transportation and Parking Authority bond issue of about $31 million, and then $9 million that will come from MAPS 3. Um, the MAPS 3 funding is made up of a $4 million savings in the substation construction, the relocation of the substation that is in the convention center footprint, and $5 million, that's um, excess revenues and contingency funds in MAPS 3. Now, these MAPS 3 decisions will be considered by city council tomorrow at their meeting. Um, and as I mentioned, the city is a party to this uh, real estate purchase agreement as well. The next one. So um, just to kind of summarize the terms of the real estate purchase agreement, the purchase price for the property is $14 million. That, that will be funded through $9 million from MAPS 3 and a $5 million promissory note that um, OG&E will issue to the Economic Development Trust with a 20-year maturity and 0% interest. It will have an annual payment of $250,000. The purchase price is a, is a negotiated amount that is based upon the fair market value of the property along with the cost to relocate and reestablish the OG&E control center that is located on that property right now. Um, for example, the big antenna that's obvious, very visible on that location now will have to be disassembled and moved and reassembled somewhere else. So the cost associated with all of that and all of the other equipment and how it's configured in the building and used by OG&E is a part of the negotiated purchase price. Um, the agreement also provides that OG&E will remediate environmental problems on the property, um, including in the parking area, in the building, and the area under the building um, if, it, if it's necessary, and they will do that at their expense. <clears throat> um, there are some items of additional consideration in the agreement. OG&E has asked for our assistance to uh, construct a temporary and a permanent extension of Central Avenue to their new control center facility. Um, if the cost of that road construction exceeds $120,000, OG&E will pay anything in, it, in excess of $120,000. And then they've asked us for um, assistance and, um, and funding for a site for a new substation to serve a transmission line that, that runs along Northwest 10th Street. They have a need to um, provide for additional demand in that area in the future and have asked for our assistance and in, in, in funding of finding a site for that substation. Um, right now the closing is set for March of 2019 and that's, that, that kind of brings up one of the issues why it is important that we move forward with this purchase transaction now and, ha and get it approved as soon as possible. It will take OG&E several months to build a new facility and relocate all of their activities to the new facility. Um, so we need to give them adequate time to get that done. They've estimated that that's about 16 months. Um, we're, we're hoping that it's less because we have a requirement to provide a parking garage 
for the convention center and for the convention center hotel by the time those projects are completed. Kathy, do they have an anticipation on the amount of time required for remediation? Um, I don't know that, the, that we have that yet, but, um, but for example, some of the remediation will, ha will take place in the parking area and they can begin that right away. And, you know, one of the things about these projects is we, we have a lot of tasks that run in parallel. You know, once OG&E gets approval of the agreement, they can begin what they need to do to build their new facility and we can begin the process of planning and designing a parking garage. So we'll be running a lot of different activities all at the same time. Um, this is just a, a an, uh, map of the site, just so you're familiar with it. Um, it shows the Convention Center Hotel, the Convention Center, um, the relocated Broadway Avenue, and then the OG&E site that's, the, that's part of this agreement. So with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Um, Today, the item before you um, authorizes the approval of the purchase agreement and um, incurring the $5 million indebtedness. Thank you, Kathy. Any questions or comments from the uh, trustees? <coughs> we have a motion to approve. And a second. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, please cast your votes. And it is approved. Thank you, Ms. Kathy. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, the Economic Development Trust Annual Financial Report. And before you is the Annual Financial Report uh, that was recently completed by our external auditors. It's for the fiscal year ending June 30 of 2017. Um, on a on on good note, it's an unmodified opinion, which means everything's clean. And uh, I'll refer to you, and uh, without getting into accrual accounting and all of that, um, I will tell you we ended the fiscal year with approximately $54 million in cash investments or some type of liquid asset. So uh, we are in good financial shape. And if you want any really detailed um, answers, uh, the accountants are here to answer them. <laughs> and they would love to get up here and explain this to you. Any comments or questions? Any questions for Brent? We have a motion and a second to receive it. Please cast your votes. And it is so done. Next up, general manager reports. I don't know that there's that much to um, go over. Just a couple of things. Um, we did receive $900,000 in um, repayments to the Gold Bond Fund for donations on the Softball Hall of Fame. It's an agreement we entered into a few years ago now that, that they are collecting donations and repaying us for that. <clears throat> and then on the Outlet Mall, um, sales, have, sales have been 2 point, let's see, through October, they were 2.3% above target and 3.3% above the same month last year. So. Looks like the city sales tax revenues are picking up and the outlet mall is helping to contribute to that. So, good news. That's all I have. Any comments or questions? We don't need a motion on that, do we? Didn't think so. Uh, that being said, any comments from staff? I would, I would just like to remind you that our meeting for scheduled for December 12th will be canceled. So since y'all were gracious enough to come in and have the special meeting, we will cancel the one for December 12th. So um, thank you. Thank you, Brent. Any comments from the trustees? Seeing them, appreciate you all being here. I know it was a, a struggle for some of you to get here, and uh, thank you very much for your effort. Any citizens wishing to be heard? And seeing none, we are adjourned.